Uh, our next guest is Karen Jagoda. Karen is the president and co-founder of the eVoter Institute, and she is also the host of a weekly radio program uh, called Digital Politics Radio. Uh, I've actually known Karen for a while, and, and she had me on her program talking about third-party politics. So, so I guess this is a bit of uh, turnaround is, turnabout is fair play. So I get to ask her tough questions today and put her on the spot like she's done to me before. Karen, how are you today? I'm good, thanks, David. How are you? I'm terrific. And I, in preparing for the interview, I went on your site, and it said, on eVoter, it said, I'm going to quote here, the only nonpartisan organization with the express purpose of promoting the use of online tools in political and advocacy campaigns. I find that staggering that in this day and age that you are the only organization that is, is focused on this and dedicated to this. How, how do you, what do you attribute to that? Well, we started the eVoter Institute in 1999, and it was based on research we did in 1998 with the NewYorkTimes.com website. And we found that online advertising really did have an effect on the way people perceived a candidate. It could be used for persuasion, not just for a call to action. And those were the very early days of this kind of uh, technology. So uh, we started out as a nonpartisan organization. I have friends all across the spectrum. And our research has really focused on uh, looking at uh, political consultants across the spectrum as well as voters. So um, we, we tend to think of ourselves as just a little bit more inclusive, perhaps, than a lot of the other research organizations that are out there. Now, uh, just from a historical perspective, the eVoter Institute started and then Digital Politics Radio followed, or did they both kind of come together at once? Well, uh, after we did this research in 1998, uh, we put on a big event in early 1999, and I had a couple hundred people show up, and everybody said, well, we should, we should start a club. We should, we should really start working on this together. So uh, I had people from Microsoft and Yahoo and a whole variety of uh, publications like the New York Times, the Washington Post. And so the eVoter Institute started back then, and we did a lot of research and events in Washington. I moved out to San Diego in 2004. And in 2007, I was asked by the San Diego Union Tribune to uh, participate in their online radio station and uh, to do a show. And so the show was called Digital Politics Radio. And uh, so that's almost uh, it's over six years now. And uh, it's kind of evolved over time, but the format has basically stayed the same. It's a podcast uh, format where... People can digest uh, parts of the podcast or can listen to several parts of the podcast because it's an hour show that I generally talk to a few different guests uh, during the hour. Well, I, I think, and we've talked before again, that the Internet is the greatest invention in democracy ever. But I don't think enough people understand its implications for how to make our democracy better, how to have better informed voters. Um, how is it that you see yourself moving this ball down the field? Well, I think what we do is recognize how important it is to use digital tools to reach out to people. And uh, essentially, uh, there's a lot of money spent on traditional means of, of both voter registration and voter suppression. So uh, my whole mission is to level the playing field, to help uh, candidates of all stripes, people who are working on ballot initiatives, associations, and, and advocacy groups, uh, learn to use digital tools to uh, educate, to get voters to participate in the process, to get their friends and family to vote, to contribute money and good ideas to candidates. And it's really a, a question of trying to uh, get some of that money off of the traditional budgets uh, like the TV budgets and the robocall budgets and the direct mail budgets, and have it spent more on uh, ways that really reach uh, a younger demographic or an underserved demographic. Now, now, I know the Obama campaign is, you know, renowned for the advances that they have uh, 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 enjoyed in, in, in moving, the, you know, their own ball down the field, whether it was the 2008 election, 2012 election. Other than... They're obviously great success, particularly geared towards turnout. Are you seeing a lot of other campaigns starting to get in the game here and become a lot more active? Uh, we've become, uh, my colleagues are encouraged by the progress we've seen over the last 15 years. 
uh, it's certainly not been fast enough. And certainly uh, other industries, say the travel industry or financial industry, I've seen a lot more money uh, be spent for online advertising and online outreach. But um, it is going to more state and local races where candidates are realizing it takes more than just a website. They need to participate in social media. They need to buy some online ads. They need to use some uh, techniques to build their online lists. So uh, that is part of our mission is to really educate and get people more involved in uh, the online world because it's really cost effective. And uh, even if you're a candidate with not a very a large budget, you can still be very effective online. And that's, that's really part of the mission of the Digital Politics Radio Show is to to talk more about how it is being used and to illustrate through some case studies. So you have this broad spectrum of topics. How do you go about picking a topic from week to week and how do you decide where you want to put your energies? For instance, you mentioned fundraising. Do you spend a whole week on how to do fundraising? Do you do that periodically throughout the year? How do you, how do you decide how to, what topics are important and how to cover them? Well, it's a combination of things. I read uh, a number of newspapers every day. I read a number of business magazines every week. I read a lot online and um, uh, sort of getting all these bulletins throughout the day of what's important. So I try to keep my finger on the pulse of what people are talking about and what uh, is kind of uh, in the air in terms of political campaigns or, or the, the actions that, that people are, are thinking about taking. And, uh, of course, I listen to a lot of cable. I, I watch um, all across the spectrum again, you know, Bill Riley to Rachel Maddow. And uh, the whole idea is to try to be timely. Uh, but also a lot of times people come to me and say, I really want to be on the show. I heard somebody talking about XYZ last week, and I really think I can add to the conversation. And uh, when can I, can I get on the schedule? So uh, I try to kind of mix it up a little bit. And uh, I try not to plan too far ahead because if there is a disaster or if there's some big announcement, I try to be uh, relevant. Uh, so if I plan out too far, sometimes I might uh, not have time on the schedule for somebody who's really got something important to say this week. But I, I like the shows to also have a, a somewhat of an evergreen uh, functionality. So if we're talking about fundraising in 2013, someone could listen to the show in 2014 and perhaps pick up some tips and understand a, a little bit more about online fundraising techniques. So, so let's talk about something like that for a second. I'm, I'm someone who uh, wants thinking of running for office. How do I access the eVoter Institute or Digital Politics Radio? How do I get into your archives and how do I get educated on some of these topics? Well, uh, you can go to digitalpoliticsradio.com and uh, that would give you um, the weekly shows and an opportunity to see um, what we've done in the past. And uh, also the evoterinstitute.com site is where I have uh, links to a lot of the research we've done. And also I post links to the webcasts on that page as well, kind of a summary page. And uh, it's also got a listing of a lot of the sponsors and supporters of eVoter Institute. So it's another resource that people can take advantage of. But digitalpoliticsradio.com is a good place to go to listen to the weekly shows. So you, one of the things you mentioned, and I find this to be uh, an, an interesting concept, and I don't know how many people focus on it, is the fundraising element. Um, are you finding this drilling down to the local again? Again, well, uh, local level. Let's pick on President Obama. He, he raised staggering amounts of money over the Internet. Do you find that local candidates are using this, and how has your show worked, if at all, to help them understand the value of the Internet in raising funds? We've talked about the nationalization of campaigns uh, often on the show, and that would mean uh, a congressperson or a senator or even a, a governor uh, who gets national attention is raising money from outside the district where uh, people are sending money who can't even vote for that particular candidate. And we're seeing a, a real rise in that kind of phenomena. The question is, how does the candidate resonate with people around the country? And uh, not every candidate will, not every ballot initiative will, but uh, it, people need to think beyond just the local border and find people who are supportive uh, in communities uh, all around the country that may be introduced to them by people in their district, but who might be able to support them with um, some funds or even some 
manpower of you know calling folks on election day or, or getting out the vote kinds of activities such as a rally. And, and, and conversely, one of the things that, again I think is so neat about the internet is you could be running for a local office and historically, let's say over the last 10 or 15 years, it's been all about television advertising, which is extremely expensive and makes these elections very expensive. Yet when you have the internet, you now have a tool that's very efficient, very targeted, and very inexpensive to use. Do you find that people are, have, are making that transition? Uh, that's one of our missions. And uh, oftentimes on the show, I'll talk to traditional media people about uh, how they can justify all that money being spent on TV ads. And it's becoming increasingly difficult for them to argue that money shouldn't be spent for online ads and for online video ads in particular. So um, we, we're trying to level the playing field and we're trying to help people understand just how powerful online ads can be. And it takes both education and sort of convincing uh, to, to use some new medium. It's Like I said, I've been doing this for 15 years, but uh, for a lot of people that's still sort of new and untried. So. And We're again, your, to, to and, and your site that your, really does work. I'm sorry, sorry for interrupting. Your site is nonpartisan. You don't take sides on issues or take sides on elections. You're trying to be an unbiased uh, professional site where people can obtain information. Absolutely. And uh, on on the show, we'll we'll talk to uh, a Republican and a uh, a Democrat on the same show. Not not talking with each other, but you know, one second be with a Republican, um, and uh, you know. It, I'm very nonpartisan. I think if you listen to the show, you'll, you'll have a hard time figuring out what kinds of candidates I might support. Uh, but I do I definitely uh, come out as a, an evangelical person for the use of the Internet for campaigns and advocacy. So part of my promise to you, Karen, because I've worked with you for a while, is to let you make your uh, pitch here in closing. So uh, tell all our uh, viewers uh, why your site is great, how to get to your site, and how to make the most out of it. All right, well, uh, digitalpoliticsradio.com. Uh, go there to listen to the weekly show, and uh, you can sign up for the RSS feed from that site. You can also go to evoterinstitute.com and sign up to get on the mailing list there and also listen to the podcast from that location. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at evoterinstitute. You can find us on Facebook at Digital Politics Radio. And I also have another show, EmpoweredPatientRadio.com, if you're interested in the convergence of technology and medical and health information. So I'm all about uh, disruptive technology. And if you follow me on, on either of those sites, Facebook or Twitter, I, I often set uh, links to things that are really uh, catching my attention when it comes to this convergence of technology and politics. Yeah, and, and I think that's the key. It is the convergence of technology and politics and uh, uh, we want to keep educating our viewers on how to get there and how to make the great use of this tool. So thanks for your time today. We'll look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks, David. Appreciate the opportunity.